New Hope TV, your encounter with God. If you have your Bibles, would you go with me to chapter 12 of the book of Matthew? A strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man and then will you spoil his house. Father, we pray that you'll take a lot this verse of scripture and bless it to us, God, as we expound and as we, Lord, go further into this verse. Speak to us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about a storehouse. How many of you have storehouses in your house? Some of us do. Amen. What do you put in the storehouse? I'm sure the ladies will, will say they, they stuff a lot of things inside. Amen. And you notice when a lady is in the kitchen, she's in and out the storehouse. What is she doing? Going and taking out stuff from there. So we have a storehouse. Amen. But I want you to know it's not just the ladies that have a storehouse, but every individual seated over here, you have a personal storehouse. Amen. Now, if you would take an inventory of the things that you have in the storehouse, you'll be astounded because you have things loaded there. You have a lot of stuff. Everything that you have need of is in that storehouse. Need a car? It's there. You need finance? It's there. You need some more happiness? It's there. Amen. You need some more joy? It's there. So you can make a list and all these things are found in the storehouse. Lock. And that lock was being put over there from the time Adam fell. When Adam fell, God put a lock over there. So for 4,000 years, that lock was put on that storehouse that each one of you had. But we want to thank God that Jesus Christ shows up almost 2,000 years ago. And when Jesus Christ came, he was the only one that was able to unlock that lock. And he's kept that storehouse open. So now we have in abundance kept in that storehouse. And my brother, my sister, we are so excited, we are so happy this morning that we have access to that storehouse because that has been opened by the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only did he open it, he also opened the treasure department in heaven, according to Philippians 4.19. For my God will meet all of your needs according to his riches, where? In heaven. So he's unlocked the treasure department. And from there, there's a constant supply. There's never ending. Amen? There's no lack, absolutely. So that's our storehouse. But, have you noticed we have lack? Contradicting. If I tell you the storehouse is open and you have an abundance in that storehouse and you have a source from where it comes, it comes from heaven, a constant supply. But pastor, what do you mean by saying there's a lack? There's a lack because if you go and inspect, there's a lock put over there. The canker worm slowly slipping into our place. What does a canker worm do? A canker worm devours. There's a devouring that's taking place. So now we have come to the conclusion, if God Almighty has opened the storehouse, but now I have a lack, what's the reason? By the way, who do you think put the lock over there? Can I ask somebody a question, who put the lock on the storehouse? Have we put the lock? 
Or some will say, God put the lock. We have put the lock. So this morning, I want to show you one of the ways in which we can unlock that lock. Amen? And we can have an abundant supply once again into the storehouse or the storeroom that we have. Eight. Are you there? Let me read verse one. It starts with the word and. Whenever it starts with the word and, it's not the beginning of a sentence. It's a conjunction over there. It is something that follows. So, come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and to observe and do all the commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And I believe it's going to happen this morning. Amen. You are going to be set on high. He will set you on high. You will be above all the nations of the earth. Amen. Are you happy this morning? Now, looking at verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass. Now, I told you it's not the beginning of a sentence. It's a continuation of a previous sentence. So what is a continuation? If you're looking at chapter 27, Moses brings the 12 tribes and stands them at two mountains. One is Mount Ebal, and the other one is Mount Gerasim. And then he looks at six people standing on the six of the tribes and six of the tribes over here. He looks at this tribe and he says, I want you to speak all the curses. So this tribe speaks all the curses. And then he looks at this tribe, he says, I want you to speak blessings, pronounce blessings. And they pronounce blessings. But if you read from verse 1 coming all the way down to a couple of verses, you would find out that there are 12 curses spoken. We're not going to get into all the details of it. But when I look at verse 11, And Moses charged the people, saying unto them, Say, a day that stand upon the Mount of Gerasim, to bless the people when they come over the Jordan. This is after they cross the Jordan. And then he's got the names of the, the six tribes over here. And then he comes to verse 13 and says, And they shall stand upon Mount Ebal, and curse, and then the six tribes over there. Disobedient and not following the command of the Lord, he says all these curses, 12 curses mentioned over there. But in chapter 28, verse 1, and it shall come to pass if you shall hearken. Are you listening? How many of you would like to have the blessings more than curses? Few hands went up, the rest won curses. <laughs> that these are the curses spoken. My brother, my sister, as a result of the curse, there's lack of blessing. Am I right? As a result of the curse, there's a lack of blessing. So, in very simple terms, I may say, because there is no blessing, the blessing is locked. Who has put the lock there? My disobedience has made me to put the lock on the blessings that I should have access to. Are you listening, church? So, Moses says over here, he says, and if you shall hearken, God is wanting us this morning because for too long we as a church have lived under curses. We as a church have lived in lack. Our life has been miserable. We don't have what we need. In most cases, there's no happiness. We don't have. When there's a lack, 
Whenever there's a lack, there's unhappiness. Amen? Have you noticed that? When you don't have, when we don't have, we don't have proper resources, we don't have proper finances, we don't have two pennies to put together. The sadness. But when somebody has in abundance, is there sadness? There's happiness. There's joy. There's a lock put on our storehouse. And this morning, we're going to unlock that lock. Amen. Amen? Because my Bible says, and your Bible also says, and how many of you believe that Jesus Christ is not talking Tom and Jerry stories here? He's speaking the facts. Amen. Because it's God's word. If the Bible says he wants you to be above, that's it. No ifs and buts about it. If he wants you to be above all the nations of the earth, so it is. Amen? God is in the business of blessing his children. He does not want to allow curses to come upon his children because God is a good God and God wants to meet all of your needs according to his riches in glory. And can the church say amen? He wants to do it. But the problem is, his hands are tied. He's not able to do it because we have turned our back against him. We have gone the way of disobedience. And God says, he says, I'm speaking to you as simple as this. Because of your disobedience, you have mounted these curses upon you. Now, I'm not saying we are deliberately being disobedient. In our ignorance, we, are, we can also be disobedient. Amen? You know, we say, well, that's what the Bible says, and it's so hard for me to follow the commandment of the Lord. It's so hard for me to do this. God is a merciful God. I know He will have mercy on me. He will forgive me. My brother, my sister, that is some tall story. That's, that's some stuff we are not going to buy. Amen? We got to become serious because he is serious with us. And it shall come to pass if thou shall hearken diligently. Now, when I read each word in that verse, I got to think about it. What does the Lord mean by saying diligently? He does not say haphazardly. You got to follow it to the dot of an I and the dash of a T. Amen. Diligently, it has to be followed. To hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all the commandments, not some, not few, not most of it. Everyone say all. Now, I'm sure we cannot follow all of his commandments. I'm being a pastor, I find it difficult. But my heart is set to follow. Amen? I can't follow, but I'm trying to follow. And God is not looking at me following everything. He's looking at my heart. Which I commanded you this day, that the Lord thy God will set you an eye above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2, And all these blessings shall come upon thee, my brother, my sister, this is the word of the Lord. He wants every blessing. Not some, not few, not most of it. Every blessing. And all these blessings to come upon you, and not only to come upon you, I love the next word in that verse, and it shall overtake you. Amen? Or in other words, it'll, it'll come in, in, in full blast. And it shall overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, verse 3, blessed shall be, shall be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kin. Blessed shall be thy market basket in thy storehouse. 
Amen. Blessing, 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 blessing. My brother, my sister, how do you think it's going to be when you realize that I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And when people look at you, they will say, surely this person is blessed and blessed of the Lord. Amen. It's because we have to be obedient and hearken to the Lord. Now, you have a list of blessings mentioned over there. But when I come to verse 14, not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left or to go after and serving other gods. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. Now remember, but also is not the beginning of a sentence. Amen? It's a continuation. But it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken, can somebody tell me this morning, Pastor, I'm not going to hearken. I'm sure none of us will say that. Amen? If you're not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all of these curses shall come upon thee and shall overtake thee. What I would like to do today and what we would like to do today is to come to a point and say to the Lord, Lord, I'm ready for your blessings. Lord, I want all of your blessings. Lord, I want to see your blessings being poured upon my life. Now, because of lack of time, we won't go into the verses over there. But one of the verses says, he says, and I will command my blessings to come upon you. Amen? Now, when you look at that word command, it is something that the Lord, the, the, the Lord is literally saying that you will see of the blessing of God fall upon you like rain. Amen? It will come upon you in a mighty way. So he says, all of these curses shall come upon you. And shall even overtake you. Cursed shall be. And then it goes on from verse 16 onwards. So that is how the lock has come. Now, one of the ways in which we can have a lock on our blessings. And I want you to listen to as I close, as I come to a conclusion. I want to talk to you about the law of increase. You know, we need to know a little bit of the law of increase. How do I increase in my resources? How do I increase in my finance? How do I increase in my, in my, in my life? And, um, you know, how, you know, the list can go on. God wants us to increase. So we need to follow the law of increase. Elijah comes and meets a widow, the widow of Zarephath. Now, the Bible says... This widow was on her way back returning after she gathered a few sticks. She's going straight to her kitchen to bake the last chapati. That's the last meal she and her son was going to have. So Elijah comes along. Now listen to this very carefully because this is powerful. Elijah comes along, meets this widow. Now I'm wondering why the Lord picked a widow. Not somebody else, but a widow. So he met this widow, and he said to this widow, he said, get me a drink of water. Now this widow looked at Elijah, probably would have thought to herself, what a man this is. We're having such a high famine and drought. There's not even a drop of water that we had for almost, you know, two or three years. And this man is asking for water. So she goes to her son and she said, son, he wants water, so what shall we do? Son would have said, mom, give him. So she took a glass of water and she's going. Probably that was the last bit of water she would have had. So she's going to give him that water. He looks at that widow. He says, now wait a minute. Thank you for the water. But can you get me a meal? So she says, no, you're pushing it too far now. Do you know I'm a widow? And do you also know 
I got this bowl, little bowl of flour, and I got a little cruise of oil. So my son and I are going to make the last chapati. And after this, we're going to die. He looks at that widow. He says, get me a meal. So she goes and he tells her son, he wants a meal now. He asks for water, now he wants a meal. And this is the last meal we have. Am I speaking to somebody here this morning? You have something that has all come to an end. And like I told you a little while ago, you cannot afford to give, but you cannot afford not to give. Pastor, I'm hand to mouth existence. Praise God. It'll be God's hand to your mouth. Amen. Amen. Um, very famous fashion blogger by the name of, I can't get a first name, but a second name was Rodericks. Can somebody give me a first name? With fourth stage stomach cancer. She said, I have a brand new car parked in my parking lot. I have this big mansion that I live in. That brand new car that I have cannot do anything. This mansion that I'm living in cannot do anything. She said, I have heaps of money in the bank. And all the money put together cannot do anything. She said, I can take a plane at any time and fly around the world. But that cannot do anything. And this is what she said before she died. She said, but you don't grumble for the things that you don't have. I have, but nothing could be done. She said, but what you may not have, don't grumble. Thank God for what you have. Amen? We grumble when we, when we don't have a new pair of footwear. But how about when we see a man who's lame walking? My brother, my sister, I'm thankful to God that from head to toe, I'm perfect. Are you thankful to God for that? Are you thankful to God you are not in the ICU? Are you thankful to God that you're not in the hospital and getting a big bill which you have to pay a few lakhs. Amen? Amen? We are thankful to God for every blessing that he has blessed us with. Amen. We are thankful to God that he has made us perfect and we are hale and hearty. Amen. Amen? Here we get a few fevers here and there, a few coughs and colds. But anyway, that, that's okay. But on the whole, I thank God and we need to thank God that we are perfect. We are not laid up in a hospital bed right now. We are not in the ICU. My brother, my sister, God has blessed us, but that's not enough. God wants to bless us much more than what we've been blessed right now. Amen? The man wants, but I, I, I perceive that he could be a man of God, so let's give it because when we give it, we're not giving it to a man, but we're giving it to the man of God. And we believe that some blessing will come somewhere. Meal. And the boy said, give it. She went to the man of God and gave it. And when he took it, listen church, when he took it, he looked at this old lady and he looked at the little boy. He said, as long as the famine lasts, you will never have lack. There's a famine in the world. Today, companies are closing down. Big companies are winding up. There's a global recession. And this is only the beginning. It's catching up soon. People are going to be running hither, thither for a piece of bread. But I want you to know, church, God says to you what he said to that widow, as long as the famine lasts. And guess what? Every day they were having chapatis. And not only were they, were they having a meal 
people would have come to know that these people, we are perishing, we are dying of starvation, that, but these people are healthy, they're having a meal, so let's go and see if we can get something. So when they went, they were probably when they go there, this lady is taking some flour. Now, I, I can't understand this, but I can explain how it could have happened. She put her hands, she took some flour, put it in the, in, in the kneading bowl, and she put <clears throat> some more flour and more flour, and somebody is looking and says, what are you trying? You got a small basin, but you put in that kneading bowl so much of flour, much more than that little basin carries. And if this lady said something, I guess this is what she could have said. She said, I'm putting my hand into the basin of God. Amen? Amen? And so this, I mean, they survived till the famine lasted. They had oil that never ran out. They had flour that never got over. They had water that never disappeared. Then Jesus Christ comes along one day. He looks at Philip and Peter. He said, we have more than 5,000 people here. It says 5,000 people plus 5,000 women plus children. So if each one had two children, which is minimum, 15,000, I guess. Now, we're going to serve them. We're going to give them a meal. But, but Philip said, he said, Lord, but how can we do this? You know, we cannot go and get, you know, such a large amount of food. It's impossible. Even if we go and buy, it's still impossible. And even if we're going to buy, we don't have the money to buy. So how are we going to do it? And then somebody looked at a little boy carrying his lunch packet. And so he went to the Lord. He says, there's a little lad over there. God said, bring it. Now listen, that boy had all the reason to refuse. He could have said, no, I'm sorry, how can I give it? This is my lunchbox. My mother packed it up, she prepared it, she gave it to me. This is my lunch. I'm sorry, I cannot give it because I cannot starve. But the boy gave it willingly. And when the boy gave it willingly, the Lord took it. Now listen, church, the Lord took it, he broke it, he blessed it, and he told the 12 disciples, he said, carry 12 baskets and come here. And they brought 12 baskets. You know what the Lord did? He broke it and put in each one of the baskets. He says, now go and serve. And so the 12 disciples were looking with one tiny piece of bread, one tiny piece of fish. How are they going to serve 15,000 people with this? But I'll tell you what happened. Peter went. He broke one piece, put in that guy's plate. Broke another piece, put it there. Broke another piece until the swallow said, ah, oh, enough, enough, it's too much me. Because the Bible says they were all filled. Too much. My brother, my sister, how was that possible? This is not magic. This is putting your hand into the basket of the Lord. Amen. And this all happened because one boy was willing to share what he had. Thank you.